What's up guys, it's Drifts and Lifts here. Welcome back to the Drifts and Lifts Epic Evolve Drift YouTube channel. Most of you guys know the amount of gravy that gets poured on you. Um, and there's gonna be some poured on you today. So let's get into it. Um, today's video guys, I mentioned uh, that I would show you guys how to replace a Volvo 740 steering rack. Um, so I just messed around in the garage today and I'm going to be replacing the steering rack on Miss Huff. Uh, from what I believe the last drift event I was at in it, um, I I was at full lock and I ended up hitting into Buddy's door and ever since that the steering's been all weird. It's got some sticky spots and it'll like stick in one spot really bad. Uh, it's actually pretty sketchy. You don't want to drift like that. Um, so I was actually just starting into the job and I remembered I got to film this for you guys. So um, basically that's just going to be the video for today. So I guess we'll get started. All right. So if we crawl under here, the first step to removing the steering rack um, which I already did, I apologize, uh, is going to be removing this plate. Essentially just goes right there. Um, that plate is sort of like a protector. It uh, keeps debris and stuff away from this line on the steering rack. Uh, if you crack this line, you're not gonna have a good time. Um, as you can see, Miss Huff's subframe is pretty damaged, like it's bent right here. Uh, but from what I can see, the whole subframe seems to be fine um like the actual i hope it's fine at least you know it could be not fine and maybe that's the whole reason why my steering's all messed up uh but i'm gonna go ahead and say steering rack i've had this happen before where i came in contact with somebody um during a tandem and it ended up bending one of the teeth in the steering rack and uh, then the thing handled all fucked up after that and uh, it wasn't a good time so um start off with uh, removing this plate underneath it uh, there's only a couple things you really got to remove to take out this steering rack. So I'm going to go through them right now. We're going to undo our tie rods, um, the tie rod end. So that's a, on most cars it's an 18, could be a 19, maybe a 17. Uh, so you're going to undo those. You're going to, um, you're going to bang on the, well, there's a couple ways to do it. My favorite is actually smashing right here on the side of the knuckle. Um, see, I have Kaplanke racing quick steer roll center correctors, uh, so it's a little different for me, but I usually just smack on here and eventually the tie rod pops out. Uh, so you're gonna get that out. Uh, the other thing we're gonna have to remove is this bolt. So uh, this the steering rack is essentially mounted in the car uh, to the subframe simply by this bolt and this bolt. So from what I can see, this is a 13 mil. And then on the back side, if we look back here, there's a um, a little hole where you can put a socket in and I believe it's a 17 or a 15 uh, So you're gonna you're gonna undo the bolt actually goes through the whole steering rack as you can see right here um, You're gonna take those bolts out. So once you got the tie rod end and these bolts out Then we're gonna go towards the actual fittings where the uh, steer power steering fluid is gonna go so I hope you guys can see this we got uh, one right here and one right there. So there's really not a whole lot to it. You're gonna drain out the power steering fluid, put a bucket under your car, um, cause as soon as you crack one of these, it's gonna start pouring out fluid. Um, and then the final thing, uh, let me crawl under here a little bit. All right guys, so I got a bit of light here. Uh, the final thing you gotta remove um, is going to be the steering shaft. Uh, so it's essentially splined onto the steering rack. There's a set of splines. If you look at that bolt that I'm pointing at right now, you're gonna to wanna to loosen that and remove that bolt. Um, so I believe it's a 10 mil, a 12 mil, something like that. Uh, once you do that, that's gonna allow the steering shaft to slide off the splines of the steering rack. And once you're done that, that's pretty much all there is holding this rack in place. Um, so I'm gonna name, I'm gonna inform you guys on some things that you should know when you're changing this, when you're changing a Volvo 740 steering rack. Sorry, is this upside down right now? It totally is. So some information for you guys before you go about this job um, and sourcing parts and that kind of thing. Uh, if you don't already know this, these cars came with about three um, different kinds of steering racks. It might even be four, but the two other ones are really uncommon and I've never seen them before. Um, so the two main styles of steering rack that we got is called a cam rack and I believe that's just the brand of uh, company, the company that made these racks. 
Um, so this one right here on the floor, this is gonna be my replacement rack. Uh, it's actually a remanufactured. It looked like the best one in my pile of junk over there. Um, so this is a cam rack. Usually in the older cars, I find mostly cam racks, uh, anywhere from 85 to 87, 89, uh, around there. And then it almost seemed like once 1990 rolled around, uh, you'll see a little more ZF racks. Um, so Miss Huff right now has a ZF rack in it, and I'm gonna be installing a cam rack because that's all I have. They're pretty much a direct swap in. The only difference between the two is the input and output lines on the power steering um, need to be swapped around. So I actually haven't, I haven't done this myself yet. I've never actually swapped from a ZF to a cam rack. Um, but I'm pretty sure all you need to do is take the lines and um, essentially swap them around. So normally you say the bigger banjo is gonna be on the bottom on this rack it's on the top, so you're just gonna have to swap those lines around. Um, I think that's all there is to it from the research I've done online, uh, that's all it says. Now, they didn't mention anything about changing the lines farther up and actually um, doing it that way, so I think I can just swap the fittings uh, back and forth and that should be all we need to do. Um, so I'm gonna get this rack out. Um, I've got a couple things I gotta remove like I showed you guys there. And then once I get the rack out, yeah, we'll fucking install the new one and um, see if Miss Huff drives straight again. Alrighty guys, so this is the next day. Um, I kind of just like took a little break on that and went and did some other stuff. Um, sometimes it's good to come back with a clear mind and a clear head to look at a problem in a different way. Um, this is something I totally overlooked. And the reason that my steering was messed up on Miss Huff was not because of the steering rack. Luckily, uh, you know, I can, I can make the best out of this and this is just a good reason to make a steering rack install for you guys, a uh, video of that, but the real reason why the steering was messed up on Miss Huff was uh, because the outer tie rod was bent. So I very, very slightly overlooked this just because this was, um, was kind of covered by the boot here. But see how, see how this one is not coming out of the center of this tie rod? Um, like the the stud here or whatever you want to call it um, so that actually got shifted over like that if you look at another factory tie rod this is how it's supposed to look like so um, I definitely screwed up there but that's okay uh, steering rack isn't the hardest job in the world so that's okay um, it's good to know that all the rest of my suspension parts are good to go uh, so I'm gonna take this other tie rod end um, this one I don't think it has any play in it, it feels pretty solid um, and I'm gonna slap that on the same rack. I'm gonna use the same steering rack that I had uh, in this car before. Um, and then luckily I do have another steering rack uh, as a spare. And I'm actually gonna be bringing this up to the drift event um, next weekend uh, because it's always good to have a spare steering rack. Um, these things do, you know, explode sometimes and that kind of thing. I have bent them in the past, so it's good to go. Um, I'm gonna put on this new tie rod and get it all buttoned up. Alrighty guys, so I got the steering rack in, everything's all good. All I gotta do now is fill it with oil, uh, steer, power steering fluid. Um, so just a little review of what I did. Um, so essentially I just slid the steering rack up into the subframe and when I was doing that, I bolted in the right side first and I, I dropped the left side a little bit and just because if you push the steering rack all the way up into the uh, subframe, uh, you won't be able to get the splines on for the steering shaft. Um, so you kind of have to drop the left side and as you're putting it back upwards, you have to kind of align the, the splines. It's pretty simple, you guys will figure it out. Um, and then I put the little bolt into the steering shaft that connects the rack uh, to the shaft. Um, and then I connected my outer tie rods, put them in the knuckle right here. Um, I had to put the the power steer or sorry the steering rack boots back on, uh, so those are all good. What else did I do? That's pretty much all there is to it on this job. I connected my fittings. Um, when you connect your fittings, because uh, there's only two fittings going into the steering rack, 
You're going to want to make sure you don't have a bunch of grime and debris on the uh, copper crush washers. Just because if you do and you tighten them down, they're generally going to leak. Uh, so I just took some brake cleaner and a rag and just made sure they're all clean. Uh, so they shouldn't leak. It should be good in that sense. Um, and that's pretty much a steering rack swap for you guys. So uh, that's about it. I think that is roughly the end of the video. Uh, so all you guys here from Donut Media. Um, so huge shout out to Donut Media for putting me on their video there. Uh, that gave me like 8,000 subs. And as you guys know, I've been doing this for like, I don't know, three or four years now. And I've had like, I have like 30,000 subs. Um, so I don't know, maybe YouTube doesn't like me, the algorithm doesn't work that well. I know my channel's not that interesting, but uh, there is some, some very uh, entertaining videos on here. So um, yeah, basically all I gotta say is uh, new subscribers. Um, I don't mainly always do how-to videos. It's uh, kind of a good crossover of how-to videos and how to modify Volvos as well as thrashing the fuck out of Volvos. Um, so I'm going to keep it like that. Um, next little job I'm going to be doing is uh, fixing the engine mounts on Edna. Uh, then we can go back to the river and launch this thing off jumps and have a good time. Um, that's going to be really fun and the river is now low enough that uh, we can all get on the river uh, with no problems. So um, that's awesome. That's something to look forward to. We also have the drift event that I'm taking Miss Huff to uh, next, not next weekend, the weekend after. So August 30th and uh, 31st and September 1st. Um, yeah, so that's going to be rad. That is uh, the Drift Union Matsuri. That's actually the biggest event. Well, one of the biggest events of the season that I do. It's a two day event. Um, it's basically... You go there and we just have a freaking good time. Uh, we just drift our cars, lots of tandem. Everybody usually brings more of a beat up car um, that they're down to thrash on. So uh, it always turns out being a good time. So looking forward to that. Um, but other than that guys, that's pretty much a wrap up of the video. Thank you for watching. That's how you install a steering rack. And yeah, like and subscribe for dense Volvo farts. Peace out.